you know that I am actually human. <laughs> Didn't have a question mark. The character, the, the character clearly had his own emotional journey trying to become more human. I did. Or he did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he, did, he had this journey that, that began uh, in, a, in, in the forest, whistling and meeting Riker, and ended with him blowing up in uh, Nemesis. And <laughs> he's not dead. Dave's not really dead. Let me just say this, uh, and I want everyone to know that, uh, yes, of course, Data blew up in, in Nemesis, but what you didn't know that is, as you were leaving the theater that night, behind you on the screen, the Enterprise blew up and everyone else was killed, too. And I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen any of them again? Any of those characters? No. They're gone! They blew up! Face it! Well, uh, allegedly, Marina. That's so sad. And, and Brent, the other thing I want to say is that... What's that? I was in the DSM. Well, that's true. <laughs> You set me up, what do you mean you saw it coming? No, the explosion. Oh, the explosion, yes. Crusher was great because she was a very methodical, uh, you know, professional doctor. And a funny character. Professional. <laughs> there was always that undercurrent of that relationship with Picard that never quite consummated, except in that one episode where everybody kind of got the cosmic hots. And sort of, sort of, we saw the, just the edge of that, but uh, Jim Joyce kind of playing just the tip of that dynamic with Patrick and were you able to follow that through in the series at all? Um, there was a lot of follow through. Uh, <laughs> a lot of follow through, yeah. And, uh, how do you know we didn't consummate? Wait, what was that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, allegedly. Uh, oh, right, no, right, we did not. Um, it was great. I mean, working with Patrick was fantastic and, uh, it was, it was so much fun. I mean, he was really uh, one of the reasons I particularly wanted to do the series. It, he was so much fun to work with most of the time, right? And, um, <laughs> most of the time. and anyway, it was a great thing to sort of have. I, I thought it was a nice uh, ending around the seventh season when we had our little things in our head and we were thinking the same thoughts. It was nice and very sweet. And, uh, and I like Sean Black, you know. Yeah. I also like the fact that you brought a little bit of your hoofing talent to the show, at least on one or two occasions, right? You had that nice... It's a nice time to see some of that, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe Dave remembers what I was talking about. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm thinking it probably... I don't think it's such a nice time to see it, but what I was going to say is I thought it was very funny to me that um, Beverly, the doctor, it's incredible because I don't know how many people have gone through med school recently. And it's funny, most of the people say residency is so hard they don't find time to do the drama club on the ship and, right. then they, and tap dancing and have so many wigs. I mean, it, it, it really was astonishing and I'm, I'm in awe of what Beverly could do. But actually the dancing is fun. That happened because I think somebody, uh, one of the, um, who was it, Leonard, Leonard, um, Mason. yeah, Mason, softball. I had been tap dancing out in the, um, the lot, out of the studio, just sort of, doing it one night because we had some long, long shoot and uh, he said, oh yeah, they should put that in or something. I think that's how it happened. But it was a gap, actually. I had a lot of fun. I, and, uh, um, and I was three months pregnant at that time, almost four months pregnant. And I, I don't know if I told the producers yet. So it was really interesting that I was doing that and dancing around in that tight jumpsuit. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's what I remember. Yeah. Hold my stomach in. <laughs> All right, well, Marina, this one's for you, and uh, uh, Counselor Troy was, uh, she was enigmatic to us, because first of all, we couldn't even understand your accent. Nobody could figure out what it was. <laughs> it was, was it English, was it Greek, was it in, in alien, it was, a, it was an accent that we'd never heard before. It was so alien. It was very exotic. It was alien, because when I got cast, they said, 
You can't be British, the captain's British. And he's far more important than you. <laughs> and because, as I said, I was so grateful to have the job, I didn't like to point out to them at the time that he was supposed to be French. <laughs> and French. We <laughs> effing hate each other. <laughs> what is the first thing that French kids learn in school? How to say I surrender in five languages. <laughs> they all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, this is part of Star Trek. I'm explaining why it's Stop. So, so anyway, what? Well, he yeah, only talks to me about my accent. Yeah, what does that mean? I do not listen. I do not listen. Trash there. Have you watched the show? Yes. <laughs> He's not talking about me, obviously. He's Acting their asses off. They were acting like their asses off, asses off, but their characters were sometimes hamstringing them. Oh, I don't think so. I think that they. Well, anyway, the uh, <laughs> uh, my, my character was 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 basically he's a guy of of, of one or two words. You know, he, he was always mad. You could never remember. <laughs> true, true. He remembers why. it now. Yeah. He can tell you every line he ever said. He just couldn't remember at that time. <laughs> Alright, okay. We're, we're real tight on time. My last thing to you guys before I open up the questions for the audience. Franks. One word to describe your character. One word to describe your character. The word's hyphenated. Daring do. <laughs> Frank, thank you very much. I'll see you guys next year. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, what was your question? One word! One world? One. Oh, all right, I know why. Well, you know what, can I go last? No, I, I have a, one word to describe my character? Yes. Dana. <laughs> I was going to say Daring Do. <laughs> I guess Jonathan got there first. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and now that's next. That's great. I mean, O'Brien. Yeah. It's just, it's really <laughs> I know. Cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> oh, I, I can't think of one right now. Awesome! Awesome. <laughs> I guess I have to go with Dana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marina, you can do better. I, I'm going to do better. Uh, and unlike Marina, trust me, our skates, sensitive. <laughs> I see what you did there, right? The whole Council of Troy thing, sensitive. I like that. Do you remember when we had that fucking the, uh, the, the, the battle with the guys from Stargate? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sort of what this panel feels like to me. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna go with a compound word. Barrel roll. An engine about to explode. Yes. <laughs> the walls are coming down to protect the rest of the ship from that burning engine. The warp core is about to explode. Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of
anniversary of Next Generation. Like Jack Palance. That's it, he wants Jack Palance. Okay, Mike, tap it up for us. You got, you got anything for us? Um, hyphen, what's the word? Badass. Pressure would be uh, ethical. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay, thank you for you know being so gracious. Let's take it out to the audience. Right here we go. By the fact that I, I was like not doing it because I thought it was going to be you know gee it's going to be awkward or weird or something. And it was a creation convention. It was actually I think in New York, and I hadn't done it. it was sort of like. Two years into it or something, right, right before um, I had even been asked to come back, and it was really lovely. I have to say, I, I felt the fans were amazing, and they were. Re it really meant a lot to me to actually feel that I had been appreciated, and so it really was was nice. So thank you. <laughs> My first we did Sarah Peace New York and the show had just come on the air and everyone was very loyal to the production of her and the song and the bones. And I was waiting to go on stage in the dealer's room and on the table they were selling the old action figures, the younger, thinner version of all of us. And they had Jordan for 35 bucks and they had a limited die lot data for 50 bucks and old Baldy was selling for 75 bucks. And, and at the end of the table was a sign that says, buy any action figure, get like you're free. <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good time. <laughs> my, my first convention was before the show went on the air, and I actually wasn't um, a guest at the convention. I was actually sitting at home on Saturday afternoon watching football, and Rachel called me and said, what are you doing this afternoon? And I said nothing. She was like, get your ass to the Ambassador Hotel. Was that one of your comments? It sure was. And uh, I said, why? She said, just get your ass down here. I want to introduce you to the fans. <laughs> I have to say, who couldn't care less. <laughs> they were like, yeah, yeah, right, go away, let us talk to Major. You know, they were really, I'm sorry, you guys were really not interested in, uh, in a new show. Um, you were quite happy watching reruns of uh, the original Star Trek. And, I was torn. Um, it, was, it was actually quite humbling that I thought I had this great job, but when I actually met the fans, <laughs> they really didn't want to know. So, um, so it, was, it was hard, but then after that, once the show was on the air, um, it was a creation con in Boston, was it? The yeah. Boston? Yeah? And 2,000 people, something ridiculous. I have to correct your history, because despite what she says, people were delighted to meet her. We actually... We actually were screening, uh, I believe it was the Travel episode. It was the first time anybody had seen the episode, and they loved it, and they loved her. Despite what she allegedly claims. Don't ruin my stories, Adam. Right, they hated you. And for women to have a role model was really, um, that was great. And I feel honored that that, that happened. And I will say that for me, it was when I actually saw um, the Endeavor go up at Cape Canaveral, and I realized how incredible it really is that we are traveling in space, that there is something on Mars now. The Mars rover is unbelievable. And then we all saw Mercury 7. When we saw the Mercury 7, who were the real heroes, okay? I just got, you know, they were unbelievable. And and to see that the, 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 the soldiers who, when I did, you know, I did a USO tour, people were blown away by the show. And that I was just a little representative, it wasn't me, it was Gene Roddenberry's vision, it was whatever magic that happened between us. But it, it it is truly remarkable, and I'm very, very honored to be part of it. I didn't meet those guys because they went. They were invited. We were all invited to um, by Vice President Al Gore to Washington. Um, Adam, I didn't go because I had a convention booked for you.
Oh, well, thank you, but... So, so, you wouldn't have seen Al Gore anyway, I think it was Dan Quayle. Is that, is that Quayle? Oh, that would be Dan Quayle. Uh, we're, we're